Some of Europe's oldest known modern humans, Homo sapiens, are distantly related to Native Americans, which goes against all of the mainstream science on when Native Americans arrived in North America. Now, these discoveries suggest that Native Americans could have arrived in North America as early as 40,000 years ago. So let's get into it. Genome sequencing shows some individuals share family ties with surprising populations. And all of these populations boast plenty of Neanderthal relatives. Now, 45,000 years ago, some of the first modern humans to call Europe home lived in and around Bulgaria's Bacho Kiro cave. They created adornments like beads and pendants of cave bear teeth. They fashioned stone and bone tools and colored them with red ochre. These were the red ochre people. They hunted, butchered, and feasted on local animals and artifacts of their lifestyle were left scattered in the cave. But these ancient humans left little evidence of themselves. Just a single tooth and a few tiny bits of bone survived to the present day. Yet those fragments contained enough genetic material that scientists have now recreated some of the human stories, revealing surprising information about both their ancestors and their descendants. Now, two genetic sequencing studies published in different journals have sketched out the family trees of Europe's earliest known humans. And some of this genetic evidence is coming from here, the Baco Kiro cave. Initial Upper Paleolithic Homo sapiens from Baco Kiro cave in Bulgaria, published back in May of 2020 and The Origins of Modern Human Ancestry, published in 2021, February. Now, these two studies sketch out the family trees of Europe's earliest known modern humans. Three 45,000-year-old individuals from Bako Kiro Cave and one similarly aged skull from Chechen Hill site, known as Lat Yikun, or Golden Horse. And we're looking at that skull here. Only the Bacho Kiro individuals have living descendants, and they're found in surprising places. The genetics revealed that these individuals are related to people in East Asia and in North America, as well as South America. The ancient humans from both ancient European sites do share one common ancestral strain as well, a healthy dose of Neanderthal DNA. Among the Bacho Kiro humans, evidence seems to show that when modern humans moved into Europe, they commingled with Neanderthals longer. And later, all the way up to the extinction, which is around the time frame of these finds, 42,000 years ago. Now, in 2015, scientists working in the Bulgarian cave found human fossils, along with thousands of bones from butchered animals and an assemblage of Paleolithic artifacts. And you're looking at some of those artifacts here. These are teeth of a cave bear that were used as pendants and some other tools, scrapers, but a single molar stood out as unmistakably human. The rest of the bones were broken bits and they had to be identified as human by using protein mass spectrometry, which can spot uniquely human protein sequences not found in bones of other species. Now, when the human bones were then radiocarbon dated between 42,580 and 45,930 before present, Researchers also produced tiny bits of tooth and bone powder from which they could extract DNA and sequence the genomes of three different individuals who once called the cave their home. 
While their age suggests these individuals were among the earliest modern humans to live in Europe, their DNA reveals that they have little relation to humans that are now known as Europeans. Now, interestingly, these early Europeans we find in the Bako Kuro cave did not contribute substantially to later Western Europeans. In fact, there are almost no relation, which is mind-blowing. The groups found in this cave were largely replaced in Western Eurasia by different subsequent migrations of people. But the people found in this cave in Bulgaria are closely related to human groups that gave rise to later Eurasians and Americans, including present-day Native American populations. What's just really cool is that the fossils of three individuals in Bulgaria left behind DNA and can trace their descendants to different parts of the world that no one expected. And those places are East Asia and native peoples in America. That's amazing. Now, the genome study showed that a thick branch on the Bako Kiro human's family tree belongs to Neanderthal, and we're looking at that right here, Homo neanderthalensis. In fact, the individuals in the cave contained 3 to 3.8% Neanderthal DNA in their genes, which suggests more than one-off mating far back in their family history. In fact, the genomes show that these European humans, Homo sapiens, had Neanderthal ancestors just six or fewer generations prior. And this is the time of their demise and their mass extinction. So this is when the genes are being passed on to the future. Now the Bako Kiro cave individuals provide further evidence that the admixture with Neanderthals must have been common and recent when they had a chance to meet, since all of them had Neanderthal ancestry very recently in their family histories and all at similar percentages between 3 and 3.8%. which is amazing. Now, another study published in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution tackled the intriguing skull of a single single modern human female from the Zachakun, Chechia site. And we're looking at the skull here. It was found in the early 1950s and has confounded researchers during the years since. Any context of exactly where in the cave it was buried or with which artifacts it was found have been lost because it was looted. And radiocarbon dating has failed due to contamination. The study analysis turned up cattle DNA, the likely result of animal glue once used to glue the skull together. So the skull's true age is unknown at this point. But the DNA was well preserved in the skull. And genetic sequencing studies have revealed some interesting things about this mysterious woman. This individual shows substantial Neanderthal ancestry of 3%, almost identical to the individuals in the Bulgarian cave. And the segments of the Neanderthal genome present are exceptionally long, which is a good indication that you had very recent admixture with Neanderthals. So, we do have a correlation. Now, authors of the study speculate that because the strands of surviving Neanderthal DNA are longer than those in very old, existing modern human genomes, that the 45,000-year-old Usht Isham individual, known from Serbia, the female skull we're looking at, this individual could be of similar age or even older. Unlike with the individuals at Bako Kiro, DNA analysis hasn't been able to shed much light on what happened to this group of humans who lived in ancient Chechia, except they're not related to the modern Europeans that are there. And it looks like this little, rare little branch of the population that traced their ancestry to those people who lived. So, Unlike the individuals at Bako Kiro, 
DNA analysis hasn't been able to shed much light on what happened to the group of humans who lived in ancient Chechia. Now this little branch of the population traced their ancestry to those people who lived in Ice Age Europe 50 to 60,000 years ago. And they disappeared after the Neanderthal extinction. And they showed up in North America and East Asia. So it appears as if during the magnetic excursion during about 40,000 years ago, 42 to 42,000 years ago, this tiny population of Ice Age Homo sapiens left because it was bad. And some moved to the east towards Asia and others moved to the west and ended up in North America. And, and that's mind-blowing because we're changing the entire narrative about human migration and genetics. Now, these genetic studies suggest that Europe of this era was the scene of a complex set of early migrations in which unrelated, distinct groups of early humans split off from the common ancestors of this region. And they settled across Europe and encountered the Neanderthals already living there. Many of these modern humans' stories seem to have hit evolutionary dead ends, according to the authors. But... A handful of examples sequenced so far, like the 45,000-year-old Usht Ishim from Siberia that we're looking at, and the 40,000-year-old Osh one from Romania, well, are revealing new insights. And not all fossil humans represent ancestors of living populations or populations that left genetic descendants, according to the team. That may be more the rule than the exception. And the genomics is really highlighting that. Interbreeding between Neanderthals and humans may not have been all that exceptional either. It might have been the normal. And during the several thousand years that the two species coexisted in Europe, these new studies point to multiple pulses of Homo sapien dispersal across Eurasia, perhaps with different archaeological signatures and multiple interbreeding events with Neanderthals. So, it's not known exactly where or when or how often our early human ancestors commingled with Neanderthals. But based on the amount of internet porn, it was probably often. <laughs> Now, often the interbreeding wasn't successful for Neanderthals. Most of the genetic variants don't stay around. But Stringer theorizes, and he's one of the authors in these papers, that early modern populations could have acted like sponges, occasionally absorbing pockets of Neanderthals through limited local interbreeding in places like Eastern Europe. Perhaps that helped to cause the demise of Neanderthals as a viable population, but they didn't completely disappear. Now, based on this study and what we've just shown you, I think that uh, perhaps Neanderthals couldn't reproduce Homo sapiens, but Homo sapiens could reproduce Neanderthal or, or humans with Neanderthal genes. Almost like the donkey, jackass, mule relationship. Some are fertile, some are uh, infertile, some are sterile. So it, it, when you interbreed in species, sometimes it only works one way, where you get viable offspring that can reproduce, like the liger. So very interesting study here on humans. And based on what we've known for the last decade, there is a group of Neanderthals that are our ancestors, that we still have DNA in our bodies. But what's most intriguing about this study is that the initial upper paleolithic bone technology and personal ornaments at Bako Kiro Cave 42 to 45,000 years ago are the humans that then inhabited East Asia and America. So these are the Hopi. They're the Peruvians. They're the Maya. 
the, the Pueblo. And they're all of the East Asian dynasty cultures in China and Japan and those regions for the millennia that followed and the multiple catastrophes. So we're talking about a major cosmic catastrophe 40 to 42,000 years ago that made Neanderthal extinct. And right before that, modern humans were commingling with Neanderthals in Europe, here in Bulgaria. And then shortly after that, they were missing forever, but showed up in the Americas and East Asia. You do the math. Archaeology, well, is revealing what's been hidden, stolen from the Library of Alexandria and other places over the millennia to keep you a slave, confused, indoctrinated, and propagandized. But we're revealing the truth, one bifacial point at a time, albeit 42,000 years old, but now we have the genetics right in your face. And it's a disgrace what we're teaching people in university and at the lowest levels. History is not a mystery. It's been hidden, bastardized, and changed. And we are upwelling the truth using genetics and science and a multidisciplinary approach to stick our foot up the asses of these propagandists. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And if you don't like the narrative you're listening to, Stop watching, for goodness sakes. We love each and every one of you, even the haters. Share this video and be a hero. We love you. That's a boo.